The Goat House is back with NFL Power Rankings heading into week four, ranking every single NFL team from 32 to 1 every single week based on how teams play, how they look. Winning will move you up, losing will move you down. Not end of the year predictions. Let's take a look at what changed this week. Coming in at 32, the Tennessee Titans, who have yet to get a win, at least before this loss against the Packers. They had defense going for them, but not even in this game. They they didn't have defense, and that was against Malik Willis and the Packers. Offensively, they're a turnover machine led by Will Levis. They find themselves down six spots, 32. Patriots down three spots, 31. They look like the Patriots this week, this past week. They look like the team we thought they were going to be. Maybe the first two weeks were a little bit of a fluke. They're down to 31. Number 30, the Jags. Extremely disappointing because they should be a lot better than this. They have the talent to be way better than this. Extremely underwhelming. Big problems are coaching, offensive line. I mean, there's no edge presence on defense either, which was which is odd. And quarterback play. I'm, for the most part, a hard ass when it comes to quarterbacks. Like, you got no excuses. You got to go out there and play well. Good quarterbacks find ways. But if there was a guy that I've ever kind of been still believing in, it's been Trevor Lawrence because I know there's talent in there. But now it's hard for me to make excuses, even though I'm not really an excuse guy. I don't know if I made excuses, but it's hard for me to give a guy like that passes anymore. Uh, he's just not playing well. Good quarterbacks go out there and find ways to win. He's doing the opposite of that. They're on a big losing streak. So he still has that talent in him somewhere. It's just not out right now. He's got to figure something out. It's hard for me to believe in him anymore, but I'm not saying I'm fully out because he could. It's early season, but man, it's it's not looking good. Not it's 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 brutal. It's brutal there for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Bears to 29, down four spots. They have one win in Week One. Maybe a little bit of luck to pull that one off. Since then, not great. You know they did get a little more offensive production, but still bad. They made big mistakes. Caleb Williams picking up bad habits. The play calling's awful. The offensive line's awful. Defense actually made plays, and they still couldn't do anything with it, but the defense also gave up more yards than they have yet. Um, so down four spots to 29, the Chicago Bears. 28, the Panthers are up four spots after a dominant win against the Raiders. And somebody in the comments last week suggested that we use black numbers on the green arrows because it's hard to read, and that, that's, that's what we call helpful feedback what isn't an example of helpful feedback is saying oh my team should be higher you hate my team so there's there's the the clear difference there but that was a good point uh because a lot of people are watching on phone on mobile so it's kind of hard to read that so we switch those arrows up on the green ones the up arrows the panthers get an up arrow they look good i mean canales's offense looked like what i thought canales offense his offense could look like it's because he actually had a quarterback executing and playing well like look they have weapons they're playing well and defensively they did enough as well so uh, and that's a Raiders team that just beat the Ravens last week so and they dominated so very impressive if they look like that they could continue to climb so they are at 28 uh, after a dominant win 27 the Broncos <clears throat> are going to go up three spots to 20 seven after a pretty good outing a little bit of a step up for Bo Nix they outplayed the Buccaneers Buccaneers were very beat up but they completely outplayed them and before this week they look like one of the worst teams of football but good to see them figure it out we'll see if that uh, continues they're up three spots Browns are going to go down five spots their only win is to the Jags who look really bad uh, very sloppy of the Browns against the Giants. I guess they still had a shot even with the sloppiness. They were spotted seven points essentially in the beginning of that game. So uh, just not good. They got dominated by the uh, one-win Cowboys in week one. The resume doesn't look great right now. They're down five spots. 226, they play the Raiders. I don't know. That's like the game, the one game this week where I'm like, who the hell is going to win that one? 25, the Giants up six spots. I'm impressed with the Giants. You look at their resume, they, they, they were sloppy in week one. A lot of teams are, and they lost to apparently one of the better teams in football. Week two, they got a lot better, you know, and, and you could argue, I know Commanders fans get upset when I say it, but you can argue they outplayed the Commanders if they had a kicker. They, I'm pretty damn confident they win that game, but they lost at the end of the day. But... That is a decent loss on the resume. The Commanders turned out to be better than expected. The Giants played well enough to win, not that the Commanders didn't. And then this past week, they completely outplayed the Browns. Everybody got better. Coaching got better. Daniel Jones got better. The running game's getting better. Neighbors is awesome. You know, the, the passing game, the defense, the defensive line looks legit. So overall, I'm kind of impressed with the Giants, given what type of team, you know, they're, they're in the bottom tier of teams right now. 
uh, impress, and they're moving their way out of that group. Uh, tough one, possibly a tough one, against the Cowboys on Thursday Night Football. They're up six spots, 25. They, they look pretty decent right now. 24, the Bengals are down two spots. If they, I mean, they started way up. And like I say, if you win, you go up. You lose, you go down. You know, losing doesn't automatically put you at the bottom. Winning doesn't automatically put you at the top, but it's how you look. And the Bengals, if they keep losing, they're going to keep moving down. You know, they, they, they started towards the top. They're going to keep moving down if they keep losing. But they are putting decent football out there at least the last two weeks. Like, they, they did enough to win uh, the Chiefs game, they did enough to win offensively. This last game, the defense really took a hit this past week, so a little concerned about that. I do feel like they're better in their record, but as they continue to lose, they continue to move down, but they do feel and look a little bit better than some some teams that have one win, but again, still moving down. They, lo they lose that game So once again, so they're at 24. Dolphins are down three spots. I mean, you'd think they'd look a little better if they were healthier at quarterback, but they continue to lose. They have one win against the Jags. Uh, in week one, uh, defense actually played all right, given, you know, if you wouldn't know it really by by looking at the score, but they're down to 23, and they possibly could keep moving. They play the Titans this week on Monday night, so I don't know. Somebody's either they're going to stay put, both these teams, or the Titans are going to soar up, and the Dolphins are going to soar down. I don't know. 22, the Raiders down four spots. You almost want to move them down more for that loss. I mean, to the Panthers, just get completely destroyed. They do not look good anywhere in that game and now Pierce is kind of throwing guys well not specific names but saying you know throwing the team under the bus basically it's a little sloppy they are holding on to that Ravens win in week two I don't know how they got that to be honest probably because it's just a week two weird thing uh they still are holding on to that in the resume um and a lot of teams are looking bad so it's you you almost want to move them down more for that but that's where they end up that's how much they move down 21, the Colts are up six spots, and that actually might seem a little generous given that, you know, look what look at that Bears game. It looked like, mainly it looked like a battle between two bad teams and whoever was sloppy or whoever made more mistakes was going to lose the game. But, I mean, they do get some help. Some teams just looking really bad and moving down. But you also look at it, you know, they bounce back. They get a win without DeForest Buckner. And, you know, if there are ever such thing is good losses I mean they lost to the Texans in a close one and the Packers which ended up being semi-close uh, those are two really good football teams so the Colts uh, get some help from other teams and then by getting themselves to win so they are up six spots to 21 they take on the Steelers this week they played them well uh, last year so we'll see uh, what it, what happens this year number 20 the Rams go up three spots after beating the Niners, they did get outplayed for most of that game, but they found a way to win while being completely depleted. They did look like one of the worst teams of football last week, so let's see if they, before we move them up a ton, let's see if they start putting some things together. You think a winnable game against the Bears this week. They're underdogs in that game, which is a little surprising, but so people, you know, Vegas really isn't trusting them, so it sees them put something together here, and they can continue to move up like they did this week. 19, the Cowboys are down a whopping seven spots. They haven't won since week one. Uh, obviously got for the most part, destroyed the past two weeks. Uh, but uh, they did come back in this one, so maybe they have some life. But that run defense is is absolutely, absolutely brutal. Uh, number 18 is going to be the Commanders moving up a high this week, a whopping 11 spots. They are 2-1. and one. And do we want to fully believe in them yet? No, but I love the progression. I love how they've stepped up. Uh, each week, I mean, the Giants look a little better now too, and they find a way to beat the Giants in week two, and then they outplay and beat the Bengals, who are better than their record in week three. The defense still a little bit of a concern. The defense couldn't get a stop. I guess they got red zone stops, forced field goals. The offense looked lights out actually. The play calling, you know, converting third and fourth downs. Jaden Daniels stepped up big to big time. Much improvement just in a week, and that elevated the whole offense. The quarterback, that's why I always say quarterbacks, fine way. Like, you can't really blame supporting cast all the time for quarterback play. You can say if the supporting cast is better, then the quarterback is better, but the quarterback played better in this situation, and everybody else stepped up. It's not like McLaurin all of a sudden got good. The guy's always been great, you know, so quarterback figured out how to make plays and elevate, you know, and progress 
boom, the whole offense looks good. So it's really good to see. And they'll play number 17, the Cardinals. The Cardinals have looked better than their record. Put up a fight with the Lions. Uh, defensively, they looked pretty solid. I was a little disappointed in the offense, even though there was some explosive plays here and there. The running game got taken away. Uh, but you look at what they've put on the field. They've, they've again, looked better in their record. But a tough loss this week. They're going to stay put. Uh, the Cardinals-Commanders game will determine a lot in these power rankings. You know, the winner is going to go up and maybe go up a good amount of spots because that is a pretty pretty good game, pretty big win. And the loser is, is going, to, going to move down a little bit, at least a little bit. But if the Cardinals go down to 1-3, and three, uh, they're probably going to move down more than a little bit. So that is a massive game there. Another team that's staying put is the Chargers. I thought they were outplaying or at least even with the Steelers until maybe their four, four out of their five most important players went down injured. And they did not find a way. They slipped up, but that's a tough one. Uh, yeah, I, I would love to know what would have happened in that game if all those guys didn't, or even some of them didn't get hurt. I mean, including their quarterback. Uh, you know, they just had nothing going for them. You know, at, at, at that point, they very realistically could have won that game. But uh, you know, it's just an assumption, I suppose, at this point. But no, really, room to move them down, given you know the Cardinals lost and some of these other teams look like a disaster, and they are two and one. Falcons are going to stay put. They are one and two, uh, but they they played a good, the best, the Chiefs team. And I, that, when you watch that game, it felt like two really good football teams going at it. It felt like a postseason game, even though they wouldn't be able to play each other unless it was a Super Bowl. You get my point. Uh, so that I they they look pretty good the last couple weeks. They play the Saints in a big one this week, so I, I just think they're putting better football out there than the teams below them. Uh, yeah, they play the Saints, good good one this week. Uh, stay tuned for our weekly pick show, which is tonight, Tuesday night, every Tuesday night. You're going to want to join us for that. Make sure to turn notifications on so you don't miss a damn thing because we got that content here. 14, the Ravens uh, figured it out against the Cowboys. They moved up five spots. They dominated most of this game with the ground, but then they let the Cowboys come back. And they're still holding, I don't know how they lost the Raiders. That Raiders loss looks really, really bad right now. So it is tough to move them up any more than that. But they win. Overall, they look pretty good besides the the allowed comeback almost. Uh, but so they move up five spots to 14. 13, the Buccaneers are down eight spots. They've looked great before this week, but they got, and they ha- they are injured. So that is an excuse, but. Man, they got completely dominated by the Broncos of all teams, the the Broncos. So you're going to move down for that one. You know, you, you kind of give them a little, you know, maybe a tiny bit of a, of a pass because they've looked great before this and they were injured. But you lose to the you – know, so if it wasn't for that, they, you know, losing to the Broncos like like in that fashion would probably move you down more. Uh, so they are down eight spots, 213. Also down eight spots is the Niners. Surprising that they are one and two. Uh, they outplayed the Rams, I thought, but they let it slip away in a choke. And you know, and last week they slipped up against the Vikings, who look like a really good team. I mean, what, a lot of teams are playing bad football. I mean, we see some one and two teams up here: the Ravens, the Falcons, or other ones. There's teams that maybe are two and one, but are we fully sold yet? But the Niners, honestly, kind of on their resume, they're holding on to that Week One, even though they moved down a whopping eight spots for a reason. They, that Week One game when they were a little healthier, they dominated a good team in the Jets. But that's going to hold less and less value as they add more games on the resume, you know. So they're going to have to just start winning football games. But at the end of the day, they did they did lose again, and they did move down eight spots. It's a, it's a lot for that one. Eleven, the Saints are going to go on three spots. Uh, offense didn't look quite the same as the first two weeks, and it was against the Eagles' defense, which you expect them to do a little more damage uh, against. So it w- was the offense in the first two weeks a fluke? What is it? Kind of a question mark here. Defensively, they looked pretty good, and it was a winnable game. They probably played well enough, at least on defense, to win that game. They're going to move down three spots to 11. Number 10, Steelers are going to go up four spots. They continue to win, so they continue to move up. They win, they go up. It doesn't look super pretty sometimes. On defense, it does. Defense was awesome. Offense, they started to click at the end of that, so are they going to get more offense going moving forward I did think they benefited a little bit from the Chargers having their like best most important players going down at that point felt like the Chargers were either outplaying or pretty close to even with the Steelers so they do benefit fit from that like I feel like but they they win again the defense looks great the offense clicks to the end so they do move up four spots after the win but I felt like if they played like the full go Chargers the whole time and won in the fashion they did I would have had to move them up more uh, just because, like, wow, that's a little more impressive. But they're still wowing on defense. And, again, the offense at the end of that game. So they win. They go up four spots. It's number 10. 
Seahawks are somewhat in the same boat. They continue to win. They look pretty explosive. They did turn the ball over a little bit of offense, so a little sloppy at times, but the defense looks great under Mike McDonald. Mike McDonald, I, uh, I called this team being a very sneaky team. It's still early, but it's looking uh, like the case. So they win. They continue to move up. The Jets continue to win now since week one, so they continue to move up. They looked really good. It was the Patriots, but they looked really good, more like that Jets team. We expected very good on both sides of the ball. They go up three spots to eight. Packers are going to go up three spots to number seven. They're winning without Jordan Love. I do want to see them with their actual team in action because uh, I think they're they're capable of continuing to move up. and look, They play the Vikings this week. That's going to be huge. Uh, but a dominant win against the Titans. Let's see how they are against a better team and with their quarterback, we think, back. But they, they win. They look good. They're going to go up three spots to number seven. Number six, the Texans go down four spots. Uh, yeah, they played a good team, unlike some of these other teams that lost you know, to a lesser team, but they definitely got completely outplayed. Still feel like this is a really good football team after what they showed the first two weeks and the talent they have, but they do they, they do move down four spots after a disappointing one, two, and they go to number six. Five, the Eagles go up two spots. It wasn't the prettiest thing in the world, but they're going to go up two spots. They beat the Saints, who were hot. Barkley was awesome. Goddard was awesome. Sirianni, Kellen Moore, not so much. Hurts, not so much either. They they did. They were without A.J. Brown and Lane Johnson and Devontae Smith did go down in this game. Defensively, they played great for the most part too. Uh, it's a good win overall, even though it, was a, it wasn't pretty. It's was a little sloppy, but they're gonna go. To, they're definitely gonna move up here. Two spots to number five. The Lions are up two spots, number four, a close one with the Cardinals, but they pull it off. You know, Goff still could be a little better. Hasn't been great the last couple weeks, but last few weeks. But overall, winning games, I know they lost last week, but defense can help them win games. That's a, you know, a different a different sight this year. So that's great. I love they stopped the run very well. I love how they run the football. When they when they need to lean on the run, they can. They could be the best running team in football, the most dominant. So yeah, their running backs look good once again. They beat a good team despite the Cardinals' record. Uh, so they're going to go up two spots to number four. Uh, the way I keep saying it, the way the season is right now, it's a different season. Like it's more run oriented than pass. You have to be able to stop the run to win big games. You have to be able to run the football. I love that old school mentality. I love the way the Lions sit looking at looking at it like that. So I think they can continue to climb. They are a little beat up going against the Seahawks on Monday Night Football. Seahawks are a little beat up as well. That should be a, a in that that's going to decide a lot in the power rankings. That should be a really really good game in Detroit Monday night. A little better than the other Monday night game, which is Dolphins Titans. And there are the Vikings up six spots. Man, the NFC North is loaded at the top. But the Vikings up six spots, number three. I mean, you could argue they look like the best team in football. They beat the Niners two weeks ago. I mean, the Giants are even looking better now. And then this week they dominate their best game yet. They dominate a great. Texans team who was sitting at number two so of course you're going to move up and the thing that stands out the most about the Vikings people want to talk about Darnold Darnold fixed his career and yeah yeah for sure talk about that it's awesome he's playing great leading the NFL in touchdown passes but the thing that stands out to mo the most to me with the Vikings a lot of things but the coaching Kevin O'Connell Brian Flores that might be the best duo in football right now I, I, I'm going to be a little more confident with other guys when the game plan matters a little bit more in the playoffs. Maybe, but it's a great, great duo. Brian Flores look like, looks like the best defensive coach right now, and Kevin O'Connell looks like the the quarterback guru right now, which we kind of thought could he could be that. They look awesome, both sides of the ball, throwing the ball, running the ball. Historically great right now in getting after the quarterback. It's awesome to see. They're up a whopping six spots. Two number three into the top three. I got the Bills up a spot to number two. And the Chiefs, and we'll talk about that. The Chiefs at number one. And then real quick, I'm going to start doing this thing for Twitter subscribers. And not followers, but subscribers and Patreon members. Uh, a quick video every week. It's similar to power rankings, but it's more predicting. It's more, it's contender, Super Bowl contender power rankings. So I'll get to work on that. Uh, check out our Twitter link in the comments. I thought about moving the Bills to one. I thought about moving the Vikings to one because they look absolutely dominant. But I really thought about the Bills because, I mean, they are completely embarrassing teams. I love the play calling, the play designs, the playbook. Josh Allen looks like the MVP. I think it, season ended right now. Josh Allen or Saquon Barkley, MVP, probably Josh Allen, quarterback advantage there. They have, they're deeper. They got more ways of beating you defensively. They're very well coached right now. They're getting pressure on the quarterback. They're creating takeaways. They're a little, they're beat up at the linebacker position. They're still finding ways. They are beating teams the second they step out on the field. Uh, you know, so I really thought about moving up to one. It's just impossible to move the Chiefs down right now. 
I mean, they barely went by the Bengals. I know last week they still beat the Bengals. And this week, the Falcons game, again, I'll say it again and again. If you watch that game, it felt like two really good teams going at it. It felt like two postseason teams. And it's not really a surprise. They, they are going to be postseason teams. And they find a way to win. They find a way to be explosive and just make plays that other teams really can't make. Or maybe most teams at least can't make. So it's impossible <clears throat> and the Falcons win, to me, is a good one. That's a good team uh, on the resume. Um, other than that, the Bills and the Chiefs kind of beat up uh, on lesser teams. Maybe the Vikings have the best resume, but you know it's why they keep winning. They move up spots. It's hard to see a team moving up six spots when you're in the top three. It's, it's really rare for me. So those are clear-cut, the three best teams right now. But who will be the best teams when it's all said and done? That's not how I do my power rankings. But again, Twitter subscribers, they're going to get that. So we're going to be more like a tier video, quick tier video where, how I, where I think teams will be at the end of the year based on what we've seen so far. So there you have it for the rankings. Next video will be our weekly picks video. So that's it's a fan favorite. Can It's my favorite. Can't wait for that one. Turn notifications on so you don't miss any of the picks videos, any of the recap videos in the shorts. I've been rolling out with the shorts right now as well. So check it all out. But that will do it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.